Gon, uh, how is the North American uh, nuclear industry doing? Uh, they don't build any uh, nuclear power plants anymore, do they? Well, actually, they have uh, just recently uh, uh, given approval for two nuclear reactors in Georgia, in, in one of the southern states. But that's the first approval that has been given in 32 years. So for 32 years, there was a period of no reactors anywhere in North America being approved. So where is the nuclear renaissance land? There isn't any re nuclear renaissance really happening in North America. Uh, although, although the industry is pushing hard and trying to sell, in fact, they've been doing this for about 10 years now. They've been trumpeting the idea of a nuclear renaissance. But you know, I think it's largely a salesman's trick. They want to make the rest of the world feel that things are going well in North America so that therefore they will come and buy their reactors and they can sell them to other countries. But so they have been unsuccessful so far in making much progress in Canada. They tried to build a reactor in Alberta to help with the tar sands to provide energy and, uh, and heat to cook the tar sands to get that, uh, that material out of the ground. It's incredible. And it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. People have not gone for it. And, uh, and as it turns out, nobody really wanted this nuclear reactor except the nuclear salesman, and they've so far been unsuccessful. Recently, they've announced they're withdrawing from the, they're not even going to try anymore. So um, I, I believe that, uh, that in North America, there really isn't any nuclear renaissance happening. We've had Scientific American and other Citibank group, have, they've had an expert panel and in their estimation, they said that they expect the maximum number of new reactors to be built in North America for the next 10 years is three. 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 And that's a maximum. They figured that uh, maybe much less than that. So, so why don't they stop the industry at all? Uh, well, that's a good question. Uh, we have, we have uh, unfortunately, a political uh, uh, setup in North America, which has invested so much public money in promoting nuclear power, billions and billions of public money that they and the prospect of selling it to Asia and to other countries they don't want to confess that perhaps this has been a big mistake how is it going in Western Europe in terms of uh, I understand that uh, France is certainly a big player there and uh, I know Germany has a lot of reactors what's going on in Western Europe actually uh, in, in Germany uh, Siemens the, the uh, so play on the field dropped out. They, they stopped uh, producing nuclear power plants wow. and left it all over to the French. To the French. And uh, they are pulling now one or two reactors, so the so-called EPR, the European Pressurized Reactor, one in France, one in Finland. Uh, but in Finland, they're way, they are way off uh, the schedule. They are, were planned to finish something like uh, I don't know, last year, uh, but uh, it will take them another two or three years until being finished. Well, I understand they're building some EPRs here in China, so uh, maybe the Chinese are going to have a better time of it in terms of finishing on time and, uh, you know, getting that discipline in place to get these re new reactors built. I, I hope so, but even uh, when even the, the people who invented the design are not able to keep schedule, how should other people uh, be able to do that? Mm. And, and I know in, in Finland it happened, the, they call it now fourth generation, generation I think, but that happened the same thing we knew from Germany for a long time, you know. Sometimes they, we had uh, things that, um, when, when, for example, in, in one nuclear power plant in Krumo, they realized that, that the, the top of the, the nuclear vessel was not quite fitting. So, and what they did, they just put a lot amount of pressure uh, on, on this sort and, and real force and, and wielded it. And then there was a lot of strain in, in this vessel. And such things are also uh, happening up there in Finland, as far as I have heard. Well, I, I, I've certainly heard stories about Finland. The, uh, I understand the cost has almost doubled, and it's, a, it's quite a drain on electricity to France. Their uh, their uh, their stocks are going down. They're losing. They're having big losses. They're posting big losses. So it seems that the the EPR, which was really presented as a wonderful new uh, best, uh, new machine, that was going to be quickly built and was going to be much better than any other reactor and was going to solve all the problems and be large 
and generate all this power. It seems that this idea has been really in the West kind of discredited. Uh, even I understand that the three, the three regulatory agencies, Finland, France, and the United Kingdom, which was also going to want to build these EPRs, all three of them identified certain generic safety concerns having to do with the independence of the systems, the yeah. safety systems and the operating systems. It's amazing to me that so late in the game they would be uncovering generic safety problems that weren't identified earlier. Well, maybe it's uh, because of a lack of expertise. I know in, in Germany now for many years hardly anybody is studying nuclear industry anymore. Because, mm. because there's, well, the last reactor in Germany started construction in 1982. This is about 30 years ago now. So there are just no experienced people around anymore. Mm. And so they're trying that with young guys, or with young, unexperienced guys. And what do you expect to come out of that? Mm. That's interesting. Uh, th this is something I've heard in North America, too. The, the lack of enough qualified people, well-trained people, and especially experienced people, to really be able to do a proper job. We had a very funny situation in Canada. Not so funny if you were on the, uh, on the uh, embarrassing end of it. But uh, we have a reactor, uh, which is only a research reactor, called the NRU reactor at Chalk River, yeah. Canada. And uh, this reactor produces more than 50% of all the world's medical isotopes. And it's about 50 years old. It's over 50 years old. So they wanted to replace it by building two new reactors. They built these new reactors, uh -huh. and they even started them up. And they found that these reactors were unsafe to operate, and they have not produced a single medical isotope both reactors are now being dismantled, uh, even after uh, years of being built. Oh. So uh, it seems that they don't have enough expertise to build reactors that work properly. This is an amazing thing. Yeah. And uh, I've talked to some of the people in Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, which has now been sold, by the way, to a private concern for only $15 million. $15 right. million, dollars, which is incredible. Oh. It's like a bargain basement sale of a whole, a whole uh, reactor design company and uh, people in the industry have told me that you know all the really good guys the guys who designed the successful reactors are either dead or retired or even switched into other fields oh. and so now what they have is a lot of inexperienced people this is a real problem no wonder they're targeting Asia to try and sell these things because they can't sell them at